All right, so pick to pick up where we left off. To determine where intervals are increasing or decreasing, you find the derivative. You set the derivative equal to zero, and you pick test points. Those test points let you know whether the function is increasing or decreasing, whether it's positive or negative. So when you found the inverse for, for b here, which is what you should have done for your home, when you found the in, uh, the derivative, not inverse, derivative, um, what were your values for x? Okay, so when you made your number line, you had negative 1, 0, and a positive 1, and you had to pick numbers of, amongst each side. So what was here? Negative 0. Negative? Uh, oh, oh, negative, positive. positive. Negative, positive. Negative, negative, positive. Negative, positive. So right here, this lets you know that you're increasing from where to where? Negative 1 to 0. Negative 1 to 0, and you have brackets around that. Whenever you have multiple places where you're increasing or decreasing, right. <laughs> Technically, it's the correct square brackets are your the ones that are missing. Then you have your union, and then it's one, two, infinity. Decreasing, you should have had negative infinity to negative one, union, zero to one. Okay? You guys should have had that. And this is a part of your homework, so you should be checking if something different than what you wrote in. Okay. <laughs> Over here, you should have had values for x. Once you took the derivative, what were they? Five. Five? Yeah. Well, okay. So, so. <laughs> what happened when you took the derivative of from me is you only got negative five on top. Okay. Yeah. And so zero obviously can't equal negative five. Uh huh. So I decided that there was no point at which the velocity was zero. So you just put in a number. Okay. So you tell me you had negative five over x minus three squared. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So when you set that equal to zero, yes, your yeah. variable ends up going away because this is square. It basically ends up going away, so you just have negative five equals zero, which you cannot have. So basically that just tells you that it's either going to be increasing continuously or decreasing continuously. You have to determine what that is. You can still kind of make a number line and just pick a point to plug in to kind of reiterate that. And also just because the top is negative and the bottom will always be positive. Because it's being squared. squared. So you know it's going to be negative the entire time. If you want to check that, plug in a positive a 6. When you plug in 6, 6 minus 3, it's a positive. You square it's still a positive, but you still have that negative on top. So it is decreasing the entire time from what to what? Negative. And what about for D? Do you actually have enough values for X for D? Yeah. I got from D to zero and positive and negative square root three. Did you guys have those values? Okay. Now the square root of three, you can do this without your calculator. And the reason why is because square root of 3 falls in between what numbers? 1 and 2. 1 and 2. So that means when your test points, there they are. Your test points are 1 and 2, negative 1, and negative 2. Okay? Plus them in. Uh, what do you get? Wait, we got like y'all the exact opposite. So this one you got for what? Positive? Positive. Negative. 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 This was a negative? Yes. Negative. 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 And I cube it. When you cube a negative, what do you get? Negative. You get a negative. A negative what? Eight. eight. And what's negative two squared? Positive. Positive four. four. Minus one is. Just a plug in. If you plug in original, we need the derivative. That's why. Yeah. I'm looking like, what's going on? All right. So then, that's why it's positive. What was the derivative? What was the derivative? Yeah. Say the derivative is here. Um, x squared. Parentheses. X squared minus three. Over. X squared 
minus one squared. Let's see, low, you have so because when you since you're squaring all your negatives that gives you a positive, mm -hmm. this one here is gonna end up being negative because you'll be subtracting three. Okay. So Camilla, we can see that it's decreasing from negative three to zero and uh, sorry, negative square root of three to zero, and then zero to ne uh, the square root of three. You do have to separate those because something's happening at zero. And then um Increasing everywhere else. Any questions on that? I did it, but I when I did it, I decided to use a different color pen when I did the problem. Good job, everyone. So the first derivative test basically continues from that to help you locate extrema. You guys remember the first derivative test? Yes, you guys do because you guys can. You guys told me last week that. Oh, there's a minimum there, or there's a maximum there. That's what the first derivative test tells you. You look at the first derivative, you look at your number line, and if the derivative changes from positive to negative at that value, then you have a maximum. If it changes from negative to positive, you have a minimum. Yeah. Okay? That's what the first derivative test tells you. It basically tells you your extrema. And to find what those max and minimums are, the actual points, Whatever C is, that's your x coordinate, and then you plug that into the original to find the y coordinate of your max and your minimum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so looking back at your homework that you guys are supposed to do, that some of you guys chose not to. Okay? Just going back and looking at these examples here. What was happening at zero? It's a minimum. It's decreasing and increasing. It does create a minimum. And to find out where that minimum is, you just plug in that x value of 0 into your original. Where's the minimum located? 0, 0. 0, 0. Okay. What about at b? What's happening at negative 1? Minimum. A minimum at 0. A maximum at 1. A minimum. And even doing this, guys, you kind of be able to see what this graph would look like. Okay? And to find out what those exact values are, you would plug in negative 1 into the original equation and find out that exact what about a C? What about C? It's just going down. Is there any extrema? There's no extrema here because it doesn't change from positive to negative or negative to positive. What about here? At the square root of the negative 3, what was it? A maximum at 0. It's just going down. It's continuing to go down. There might be something happening at 0, but there's no extrema here. And what about at root? A minimum. So the same thing we're doing to figure out if it's increasing or decreasing is the same thing we do to help us determine our extreme. Okay? So, first derivative, set it equal to zero. Do your number line, figure out if it's positive or negative. Once you figure out when it changes from positive to negative, negative to positive, just plug that value in to get your extreme. Are there any questions? Alright, I'm going to give you guys about eight, nine minutes to work on these. And I want you to determine the extrema, i.e., find the points. And uh, what are they? Are they maxes or are they minimums? Y'all for A. What rule do you use to find the derivative? Product and chain. Product and chain. So the derivative of this function is the first times the derivative of the second. When you take the derivative of the second, is that where you use the chain? Yes, yes it is. The so first is this. This is the second. Okay? So first times the derivative of x plus 3 to the third. 3x plus 3 to the third. x plus 3 squared. And then this side is just going to be 1. So it's going to be 1. So this is that. Plus this times the derivative of the first, which is what? 1. Okay. So you'll, you are going to have 3x. x plus 3 squared plus x plus 3. You got that the derivative? Yeah, I got it. Okay, so when you set this equal to 0. I, I just figured it out. I'm running my graph right now. So what do you do? Okay, so the first one I thought was 0. I'm not, not 0, I put a negative 3. So then you get the inside to 0. Mm -hmm. so wait, so, oh, you can get a 
could minus the x plus three squared, or can you take out the x plus three squared? Oh. Both of these terms have an x plus three squared in common, which leaves you with a three x plus an x plus three. Does everybody see that? So then, here are your two factors that you said equal to zero. x plus 3 squared equal to zero. There, equal to zero. And then basically a 4x plus 3 equal to zero. Okay? So then you solve those out, and those are the ones that you put on your number line and test again. Okay? So, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to give you 10 more minutes to get to the end. Okay? Because the other one shouldn't be too too bad. Okay, so what, what were your, uh, your values for A? Uh, 
positive. The middle one is positive. Then what's happening at zero? A minimum. What's happening at two? When you plug them in, you'll have zero, zero. And four e to the negative two, or four over e squared. All right? C and D? There you go. This is the function for C. You have a low. Remember, it's low D high minus high D low all over low low. Okay? So this would have gone away. So you would have been left with a negative 1. You would have had this. You guys have that from the derivative?
the last one? Teachers, please excuse the interruption. We need all. X, uh, x squared plus 2x minus 3 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. One thing you also have to be aware of, isn't there an asymptote as well in this, or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Angle. So add that. You don't want to plug in negative one, because then you'll end up with a... I, yeah. plug, I did zero, negative four, and seven. Negative two, zero, positive two, and negative four. When you plug in zero into the derivative, you'll get a negative. When you plug in two, positive. When you plug in negative two, a negative. And when you plug in negative four, So what's happening at negative 3? A max, and what's happening at 1? Plug them back into the original. Give me my wife. <coughs> Questions? All right. Being the is giving you more work with derivatives and solving. Okay? The concept of max and min is pretty straightforward. Now, concavity, concave up, concave down. It's basically telling you whether or not you're going to have one of those type of curves going down or going up. If the derivative, the second derivative is less than zero, it's concave down um, on the interval from A to B. If it's greater than zero, it's concave up on A to B. And in that point in the middle, the change of concavity is called your inflection point. Sometimes the IV language they write in black. Show point, so instead of a C and a T, they write an X. So we're confused by that, it means the same thing. And the inflection point occurs when the deriv the second derivative equals zero and it changes signs at the second derivative. So you gotta look at the number line there as well to see if um you're dealing with any inflection points in the course of the cavity. Let's take a look at this. This is pulled straight from an OIB exam. I want you guys to go ahead and give this a whirl. Okay, the first two, A and B, I, you should be straight with. Remember, B double I is asking you to find the inflection points of the graph. Inflection point deals with the second derivative. Okay, the second derivative with an inflection point occurs when the second derivative equals zero and it changes signs at that x value. So I'll give you eight minutes. <laughs> I want to I want to, I actually want to see how you Right. Make sure you make sure you have it. Because it's changeable on the bottom. Oh, okay. I'm 
I'm there. I'm going to go in. Yeah.
intervals. And if the second derivative is positive, it's concave up. So that is, again, from negative infinity to negative 3 and 1 to infinity. Well, these are, these are points. These are these are intervals. I know. Yeah, yeah. How do we know it's negative three and positive one? Oh no, you just run to the second part. Oh, you the second part. Look at you. I'm like, I didn't even know to finish the first part. <laughs> that means he understood it. That's good. Concave down. Second derivative is less than zero, so that's from where to where. Now I ask you, give the coordinates of any inflection points. It says the x coordinates for one, so we're not looking for an x and a y, we're just looking for the x value, and it is what? Negative 3 and 1. X is, I mean, all the way through. Oh, I thought it was from like the actual, the, like the graph of the second direction. Like the, the derivative. Yeah, the, the second oh, derivative basically the second derivative. is not the graph of the original yeah. function. It basically tells you where on the original function it's going to be concave up and concave down. So basically, if we were to look at the original function, the original graph, then at negative 3 and at 1, at some value, by some y value, it's going to have that turning point where it's going to concave up and concave down. Other questions? Yeah, it didn't take like 20, but the other one's I even left. They're all next week in high school. Quiz, quiz. We're going to put it all together. All together. Oh. We're going to put it all together. We are oh actually going to graph God. this without oh using our calculator. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're going to use the first and second derivative to analyze key features, and we're going to find any intercepts and asymptotes if there are any. So let's start with the basic stuff, okay? What is our y-intercept? Negative 5. 0, negative 3. And you get that how? C. Plug in 0 You plug in 0 for what? Yeah. Your x value. Do we have any asymptotes? No. And maybe if you might recall from pre-cal and maybe algebra 2, do you guys remember what like the ends are going to look like in this function? Yes. Yes, I'll go ahead and do a class. <laughs> yes. No way. It's going to look like this. Okay? No. Where it's going to be up on this end and down on this end because it's a cubic. Everybody should know that x to the third, you know, goes like that. Okay? So knowing that can also help you in the process of sketching. Now, we need to figure out where this graph does the plot first and second derivative. First derivative, we need to find our extrema, see if there's any maxes or mins in this problem, okay? Because to be honest, because we don't really worry about like the whole p's and q's thing to find the x-intercepts, that's not really the concern. The concern more is where are the maxes and mins and where's the functions increasing or decreasing. So, find the first derivative of this function. Set it equal to zero. Find out where it's increasing and decreasing and determine my extrema. Do that now. First derivative, increasing, decreasing, extrema. You guys get up to here? You guys are already beat at this point. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm late. Jesus Christ. I'm just going to. I meant to be late. Um, so you guys get one one as your minimum. Uh -huh. 
one one. Oh wait, the original. I got one negative eight. Yeah. Okay. One negative eight. I'll plug this in the room and that's the original. All right. And then let's see. Forty over twenty-seven. <laughs> All right. So they say how to set the derivative equal to zero. Find your values where it changes the positive to negative. This basically lets you know that you have a maximum at negative five thirds. 40 over 27, which is a little less than 2. Okay, so you have, have a max there, and then you have a min at 1, negative 8. Okay, now the second derivative is basically going to tell us where it's going to be concave up, concave down, basically give us our inflection point. So the second derivative. It's going to be 6x plus 2. We set that equal to 0. And our inflection point is at negative 1 third. Well, we hope it is. Let's just double check. If I plug in 1, I get, po I get positive. If I plug in 2, Because you put zero. <laughs> there. I'm Lord mercy. Sorry, that should be positive. Negative one, that should be a. Yeah. Sorry, guys. So this is an inflection point. Find my y value for my inflection point. You plug it into the original. I got it. Alright, so you would have this. So this is about what? Where? Oh, about six. six. Okay, so we're at negative one third and negative six, which is right about here. Okay? So basically, at this point, it's changing from cavity. All right? Yes. So, correction, it should have been positive 88 over 27, which is actually somewhere up here. That makes a little bit more sense. Let me put this over here. Okay. The 5 is right there, so it goes down. And there it's changing from concave, what? Down to concave. So, it's going down here. It's going up here. When you have to graph it yourself, you want to make sure that you make sure the grade can recognize that it's changing to cavity. And then on top of that, I should be increasing from negative infinity to negative five-thirds. So I should be going up until that point. I should be decreasing from negative five-thirds to one. And then I should be increasing from one 